How do we know humans are causing greenhouse gas concentrations to increase? Determining the human influence of greenhouse gas concentrations was challenging because many greenhouse gases occur naturally in Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is produced and consumed in many natural processes that are part of the carbon cycle. Once humans began digging up long buried forms of carbon, such as coal and oil, and burning them for energy, additional CO2 was released into the atmosphere, much more rapidly than in the natural carbon cycle. Other human activities, such as cement production and cutting down forests, have also added CO2 to the atmosphere. Until the 1950s, many scientists thought the oceans would absorb most of the excess CO2 released by human activities. Then, a series of scientific papers were published that examined the dynamics of carbon dioxide exchange between the ocean and atmosphere, including a paper by oceanographers Roger Revelle and Hans Seuss in 1957, and another by Bert Bolin and Eric Erickson in 1959. This work led scientists to the hypothesis that the oceans could not absorb all of the CO2 being emitted. To test this hypothesis, Revelle's colleague, Charles David Keeling, began collecting air samples at the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii to track changes in CO2 concentrations. Today, such measurements are made at many sites around the world. The data reveal a steady increase in atmospheric CO2. To determine how CO2 concentration varied prior to modern measurements, scientists have studied the composition of air bubbles trapped in ice cores extracted from Greenland and Antarctica. These data show that for at least 2,000 years before the Industrial Revolution, atmospheric CO2 concentration was steady and then began to rise sharply beginning in the late 19th century. Today, atmospheric CO2 concentration exceeds 390 parts per million around 40% higher than pre-industrial levels. And according to ice core data, higher than any point in the past 800,000 years. Human activities have increased the atmospheric concentrations of other important greenhouse gases as well. Methane, which is produced by the burning of fossil fuels, the raising of livestock, the decay of landfill wastes, the production and transport of natural gas and other activities increased sharply throughout the industrial age before starting to level off at about two and a half times its pre-industrial level. Nitrous oxide has increased by roughly 15% since 1750, mainly as a result of agricultural fertilizer use, but also from fossil fuel burning and certain industrial processes. Some industrial chemicals, such as chlorofluorocarbons, used in refrigerants and spray cans, act as potent greenhouse gases and are long-lived in the atmosphere. However, the concentration of CFCs are decreasing due to the success of the 1989 Montreal Protocol, which banned their use. Because CFCs do not have natural sources, their increases can easily be attributed to human activities. In addition to direct measurements of atmospheric CO2 concentrations, there are detailed records of how much coal, oil, and natural gas is burned each year. Through science, estimates are made of how much CO2 is being absorbed, on average, by the oceans and plant life on land. These analyses show that almost half of the excess CO2 emitted from human activity remains in the atmosphere for many centuries. Just as a sink will fill up if water enters faster than it can drain, human production of CO2 is outstripping Earth's natural ability to remove it from the air. As a result, atmospheric CO2 levels are increasing. A forensic-style analysis of the CO2 in the atmosphere reveals the chemical fingerprints of natural and fossil fuel carbon. These lines of evidence prove conclusively that the increase in atmospheric CO2 is the result of human activities. <laughs>